pinchy spot. At the start of 2013, I was down to my last few hundred bucks. I hadn't done too badly with my first novel, but a corporate downsizing in 2010 left me with dreary prospects for the second, and after a lackluster publicity effort, my publisher declined to issue the book in paperback. I went out of print at the age of 31. A year or so later, I set my comeback hopes on my first children's novel, but it didn't sell. I was living at home with my mom. When I wasn't at my part-time job behind the customer service desk at the local Barnes & Noble, I was working on another novel in the quiet room at the library down the street. The writing was going well, but in my weaker moments, I couldn't help feeling like things were always going to be like this. No more publisher, no real job, no home or family of my own. I didn't mind being single and childless, but I did care that my work hadn't received the recognition I felt it deserved. Naturally, every time I logged onto Twitter or Facebook, it seemed like someone else was announcing a book deal or a prestigious fellowship or a glowing newspaper review. I received a fellowship too, a month-long writing retreat in a Scottish castle, but I felt ashamed that I had to borrow money from my mom for the airfare. It was a tremendously rewarding and productive month, but when I came home again, I felt almost as stuck as I'd been before. In the library where I'd go to write, people with whom I shared the quiet room would regularly answer phone calls as though they were in their own living rooms or issue burps that registered on the Richter scale. I'd look up at this tacky red and purple quilt hanging on the wall and feel as though I were living inside an Ionesco play, unsure if I wanted to laugh or cry. I hated that spending my days in this public library made me feel so pissy and small. Then it hit me. It's the feeling trapped that's trapping me. Rather like a Chinese finger puzzle, this realization changed everything, along with a little help from Eckhart Tolle. This book is for you. When I ask people if they've heard of Eckhart Tolle and his books The Power of Now and A New Earth, I tend to get blank looks. It seems I run with a crowd who are less likely to read something if Oprah has recommended it. But there's a great deal of wisdom to be found on the self-help and new age shelves, and it's a shame those labels turn so many people off. I'm a much happier and healthier artist for having read The Power of Now, and I'm writing this book to share what I've learned about the human ego with creatives like me who wouldn't otherwise encounter Tolle's work. Every ego is a master of selective perception and distorted interpretation, he writes, and it seems to me that creative people, accustomed as we are to building whole worlds inside our heads, are particularly susceptible to mistaking those distortions for reality. I see an urgent need for an open discussion about professional jealousy in the arts, both for our own mental wellness and for the benefit of our community. If you're tired of comparing yourself to others, tired of feeling frustrated, anxious, undervalued, jealous, invisible, inadequate, overlooked, taken advantage of, misunderstood, this book is for you. This book is for you even if you don't see yourself as an artist. I published this book in 2016 and I've had a lot of lovely emails from people saying that this book did help, but I realized that, you know, it's been three years, I should probably try to spread the word about it again because I keep seeing people on Twitter um, playing the comparison game, um, expressing their anxiety, um, what doesn't need to be said is that they do feel envious and frustrated and I want to be like so this video is my so pick up this book if you feel like you need it I hope you enjoy it I hope it's useful I hope it helps thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day